everyone. My name is Jerk, and this is the big show. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, what an audience. Just when I think we've had the best audience we can have, the next audience shows up, and somehow they're even better. And that's what today's episode is all about, taking something good and making it even better. Taking a scrawny soldier with a heart of gold, shooting a little goo inside of them, and suddenly out pops Captain America. Fighting the evil reds, only to be frozen in the frigid seabed of northern waters. Somebody get Marvel on the line. I have a movie spec to sell them. Now while we wait for them to answer, we have a show to do. And we have a guest to bring out. A longtime friend of the show, we haven't had on in, am I reading those cue cards right? 90 Krakens and exactly six months ago? I guess it's a sign. So let's get him out of here. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the Tech Tree Tier 7 American Heavy Cruiser, the real Captain America. Give it up for Baltimore. <laughs> for any of you not in the know, the Baltimore is getting buffed next week. The precogs at Wargaming have decided that it is underperforming, and so a shot of steroids is required to pump it up. And because I haven't played this in a while, I figured I should take it out and see how it performs before it gets its chin tucked and butt lifted. Now first things first, here is the commander setup. My recently acquired level 16 Norman Scott Summers with his buddies Colossus and Nightcrawler. Now onto this match, we are on Northern Waters, which we haven't seen in a while, and do my eyes deceive me? Vasis does. Only two battleships? It's like they know I'm trying to make a point with how the ship is underperforming now. Not because of anything wrong with it, but because its playstyle is so severely hampered when there are five battleships with 16 inch guns or larger on the other team. But the precogs are devious like that and opted to instead give me a match where I can show you the Baltimore wreck the majority of the red team. And for maximum lulls, they decided to load my team with some... Um, how do we say this? Most trainable players I've had in a while. Fortunately, the most egregious of which will have their name protected. Wowzles is a game of strange, counterintuitive facts. Facts that, once you notice, become mystical truths that no matter how many times you've seen it before, you are still shocked to see it again. Fact number one. The only thing that dies faster than a two-man destroyer division is a three-man destroyer division. And our two-man destroyer division on A will in fact go down, with one in a being gunned down by a who is then sunk by the torpedoes of a Z-23, only for they themselves to be sunk at the hands of a Helena. A truth stranger than fiction, and one that has not necessarily lost us the game within the first couple of minutes, but one that has definitely boned the Cleveland remaining on the western flank. Now you're no doubt saying, Jerk, by your own rules, since you recognize that issue, you should be heading over there to help them, and you are correct. And that is definitely my plan, but that brings us to another strange but true fact in the Wowzles world. A blue team with superior numbers on one flank must always retreat from the red team that is down in numbers. And if you look at the minimap, you will see that while we have six blue ships on this eastern flank, four of them are securing the trade routes between C and D, with perhaps none more guilty than the Asashio, having made sure no one pushes through the top of the map and comes up behind us through the bottom, will now go all the way over to A, not to cap A, but to attempt and torpedo a Roma with exactly zero success through God knows how many salvos. So I'm just gonna sit here, get this cap, and then bail. Because when life gives you lemons, you say, funk those lemons and bail. <laughs> now, whatever reds are left over here, we have the Hulk, Iron Man, Black Widow, and Hawkeye. Surely they don't need Captain America's help as well because I have to go help Ant-Man after this over at A. So, we will use this terrain to block these incoming torpedoes and fire away at the targets of opportunity. Whether that should be the Ochkov, which we just managed to hit the elusive Citadel on, or the Gneisenau, or should they come up again? 
the destroyer, and that is somewhat our priority. We want the destroyer, then the Ochkov, and then the battleship is least important. But watch my team. I don't know if they're aware that there is some contagion on this cap, or maybe it's got an STD or something, but hell no, they're not interested in touching it with a 10-foot pole. And that's usually when I start to get a little annoyed with my team. Our Cleveland, they have succumbed to the pressure on the western side and GG to them for lasting as long as they did. Tough situation there. But over here we have a Shores, a Lyon, a Bismarck, a Mayoko, myself. Uh, make that had a Mayoko. Well, if we can remove this Ochakov, that's two battleships and a radar cruiser versus a fling battleship and a destroyer, which sounds pretty straightforward. Whereas on the other side, there is a Helena and Roma chasing the most incompetent Asashio I can remember having ever seen. But you'll see more of that soon. So, I'm between a rock and a hard place, almost literally, well, figuratively, because this is a video game. If I don't go to A, they will push through, cap D, and come around behind us. So it is with an empty mouth and an open stomach that I say, I am cuisine. And sayonara, Avengers. You've got this. I believe in you. Now it should come as no surprise that my faith in the blue team has been misplaced because there is a third rule to wowzles, and that is that incompetence will always triumph if you're not there to watch. I don't know how. I don't even bother ever looking back over here, but somehow Larry, Moe, and Curly here will succumb one by one to the destroyer and the Gnize now. And while that doesn't lose us the game, it certainly is not going to help because everyone is always trying to lose. Blue or red, it's Wowzel's law. Anyway, now I've got this Helena. And this is going to be interesting because now we're going to see why I guess it's so important that the Baltimore get a buff. You know, I've only put up 53,000 damage right now, which um, honestly it isn't that much. But something about this ship just feels like it needs to be able to do a little bit more. Oh! <laughs> Death strike. Okay, so, hell in a gun. Now, I have experimented enough in this game that I know I can Citadel Aroma. The thing is, I have to be much, much closer, and I need to have their broadside. Now, in between where I am and where they are, I can definitely take some pretty hefty chunks out of them, but I'm not going to be able to actually penetrate and get Citadel damage. So... This is going to become rather boring as I just continue to try and close the distance and um, we can watch the most incompetent Asashio you've ever seen try and torp this Roma and see them try and shoot the Roma <laughs> with AP. Now right there, I am telling our Asashio while I was trying to, to please defend C. I needed their help defense because what I'm hoping for them to do is actually curve over to C so I don't have to keep going further and further away from C. I mean, it's clear that this player isn't that experienced, but that is something that I really think is important for a lot of people to understand. Sometimes it's better to group up, and so had we been able to head over that direction, would the outcome of this game changed? I don't know. But it would have at least got me a little bit more time later. So, anyway, now we have lost the rest of our team. Uh, and now we will see this Asashio continue to miss every single torp and keep blasting it away with AP. And now, to its credit, the Roma continues to blast AP at this Asashio, and this becomes... One of the dumbest chases I've ever been a part of. And I really don't want to be chasing. It just happens to be that I need to be very close to be able to Citadel this Roma if I want to remove it from the game. So anything that this destroyer could do 
To get the Roma broadside to me would be helpful. But the one thing that they are doing is keeping the Roma from going broadside to me. This was so maddening that in a way when I was playing this I was like, I hope this isn't a Kraken because I don't want to have people watch and see how frustrating this is to see. So, so Arasashio is now leading the Roma over to A. Further and further away from C, which is now being flipped. So while I am still confident that this will be a crack, and I am quickly losing confidence in it being a win, as I'm going to have to sink everyone who remains. Now, I almost hate to say it, but our Roma, our Roma, the Roma... <laughs> actually does me a very big favor here and is going to finally sink the Asashio, putting it out of my misery and will now allow them to focus me and in doing so give me the broadside that I have been chasing after in the slowest boat chase you've ever seen. Maybe in a act of accidental kindness this forces the Roma to turn back towards D, which is only going to benefit me. So, I guess, thanks, Asashio. Now, they are going to take a shot here, and they do knock my gun. I'm going to go ahead and repair that, because I want to have these both ready. And you're going to see where I aim. It's going to be a little bit high and right beneath the smokestacks. And there we go. So... I remember when I learned where to shoot that, it was on shards months ago. And I was like, you will remember this forever. You can citadel a Roma right there. Maybe that's why it needs a buff. Maybe with this greater uh, AP speed, we'll be able to penetrate and get a citadel even lower. I don't know. We'll have to find out. All right. So you guys know what the routine is here. We know that... Destroyer players get greedy, especially destroyer players who play a certain destroyer. So I'm expecting them to come down here to D and start capping it, and I will be able to radar them because what else are they going to do? Just wait around for two and a half minutes? I'm sure that they're thinking, okay, we've got a two to one. We're up on points. And as I said earlier, the red team and the blue team are always trying to lose. So, I get spotted here, and obviously it's the destroyer. But I'm going to hold off on using my radar for a little bit. I go ahead, I put on the sonar, because what I'm hoping for, well, one, I'm hoping for the decap to be contested, because I know it will be, they will be very close then. But what I'm also looking for is which direction their torpedoes are going to be coming from, so I kind of have a better idea of where to turn my turrets. Now, with this new buff, the turrets will be turning faster, so maybe that will also help in this situation. But as it is right now, I have a pretty good idea that they're over to the left. And so I'm going to hit my radar there, and we have them. We're going to get our shots off, and again, we will see a buff in dispersion again, so maybe these shots will be even more precise. Now, if you've noticed, I did knock the engine on the Udachi there, and they have clearly repaired it so I'm hoping to be able to get a fire on them because if I can get a fire then they will not be able to drop spot and here's gonna go their drop spot but two fires so now they are spotted again and they're going to start dropping smoke but we'll just take a lucky shot and there we go. There is the Kraken. What is that? 234, I think? In the Baltimore. All right, one last thing to do. Let's get some AP into the nose of this Gnais now. Look at those solid hits. Now, the Gnais now does the smart thing, and they're going to turn in here, which is going to slowly mitigate what I can do. But one thing we do know is that Gnais now's half to torp. They can't resist it, so they're going to open up again, and I'm going to be able to get another solid hit, but unfortunately, the clock is going to run out, and so I will not be able to finish this Gnaiza now. Kind of a bummer. Had the Asashio led us back this way earlier, who knows what could have happened. I don't know that it would have made a difference, but that's going to wrap it up for this one.
All right, let's see this scoreboard. 2,785 XP in a loss for what would have been a very good game if I hadn't lost it for us. That's right, I lost it because at the end of the day, I'm the only thing I can actually control in a match. So, it's pretty hard to give anyone on blue a GG beyond the Cleveland. They tried. And... They just got caught in a bad situation, so nice plays by Red, but Avengers disassemble. And that'll wrap it up for this one. If you now understand why the Baltimore needed buffed hit like, if you can't see how it is clearly performing worse than the unbuffed Amalfi hit dislike, questions, comments, further ways to increase the output of this ship, leave them down below. Hit that subscribe button with the force of American Super Heavy AP to not miss the next one. Thanks for watching, folks. I'll get back out there for another one soon, and we'll talk then.